All right, let's call tonight's meeting to order. Thank you all for being here to this special meeting of the Dodge City Community College. And at this time, I'd like to turn the floor over to our attorney, Mr. Kerbs. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, board, uh, I would like to introduce Alan Baskin. Uh, Alan has been here for a handful of meetings uh, prior to uh, to this evening. Uh, the board retained uh, his firm to represent us in July of uh, 2017 when uh, uh, we received a subpoena from a grand jury sitting uh, in Arizona. And so Alan is out of Phoenix and he's been representing us uh, both with regard to issues related to the grand jury subpoena that was received in July of 2017, as well as other related matters uh, to the VA. Uh, and so he's here this evening to be a part of this meeting and, and uh, has some remarks that he'd like to share with the board. So, Alan. I, I guess this is my uh, seventh trip to Dodge City. I feel like it might not be my lucky trip, but um, I, I am here nevertheless and uh, the last thing that I had anticipated or wished was to have to speak in a public setting at this particular stage uh, of the of the proceedings I understand that there are some things that are going on uh, uh, with the board that I wanted to to comment on and in particular it's as it relates to public disclosure First and foremost, I, I can speak for myself and probably everybody in this room that we believe it's critical that the public is informed, the public knows certain things that are going on, and uh, that nothing is kept from them. With that said, um, there are situations such as this one when uh, sharing uh, bite by bite, piece by piece, detail by detail, everything that's going on is, is counterproductive. And it's counterproductive to the one thing that I believe we are all here for in the front of the room, and that is the school. Uh, we're all stewards of this school. We're all here, however we manage to do it, uh, to protect the school's best interests. You folks have volunteered your time, you've subjected yourselves to political campaigns, and, and you're here because you care about the school. Um, I may be from Arizona, but there's only one thing that I care about, and that's what's best for the school. Now, I understand that different folks may think that different things are better for the school, but to best help the school and to best protect the school, the conversations that the school has through its board of trustees that are designated to have those conversations about sensitive matters such as the matters that I'm working on, are best kept to executive session. When information that is presented in executive session that is given to the board to help make decisions and to help guide us, when that is put into the public, it can be incomplete and it can be inaccurate. And it can be completely counter to the school's interests. Having an investigation of an investigation and things like that play out in the newspapers doesn't help this school, it hurts this school. It potentially undercuts relationships that we've worked hard to preserve and maintain with the regulators and prosecutors that we're dealing with. And it could turn things in a completely different direction. Now with that said, um, what's important to know is there will be a point when there are decisions that will be made, ultimate decisions, is there a compromise? Is there not a compromise? What dollars uh, are ultimately going to be at issue? That will come. And when that day comes, uh, that's not gonna be my seventh trip. By then it might be my 10th or 12th or 13th trip. But when that day comes, this board, as it has every time I've been out here, is gonna know all the ins and outs, all the nuances, because I don't get to make the decision about what this school does. You do. And when that decision is made, and whatever documents are that are signed and circulated, they are going to be in the public domain. I believe that what may be happening now doesn't necessarily help anybody. And I'm not any anyone's side here. I'm on only one side. And that's the side of DC3. And I believe for me to best do my job that this should be the last time that I have to speak in a public forum. 
that we should ha do our work in executive sessions. We should share what needs to be shared. We should ask the good, the hard questions, the fair questions, and you should get the answers you deserve. And we should give you, along with me, along with Dr. John, Dr. Nolte, the information that you need to make your decisions when you vote. And I hope that that's how we can do things going forward. I have a, I have a question. What uh, information are you talking about? I'm talking about correspondence that I've seen that has been published, uh, communications from uh, Mr. Reichenborn, there, which have triggered communications from some of the other uh, trustees. There are discussions about the flight program that are, are taking place in the in the media. About the debt? <coughs> about about the debt to the VA? There's been discussions about the debt. There's been discussions about being in litigation when, in fact, we're not in litigation. Um, there have been a number of things that have been have been put out in the media. Well, you realize the debt was talked about in the public meeting on August the 3rd and gave the exact amount owed. Well, there's nothing owed right now. Well, I know, but that was said in a public meeting. I understand, but I don't believe it's been characterized uh, that way. Excuse me? I don't believe it's been characterized that way in the, some of the information that I've seen. I, I, well, I, I guess I don't understand the legal basis for your telling that the public shouldn't know about the debt that we probably owe the VA. Well, you say probably. I cannot say with any confidence that this school probably owes $33 million or even $1. That's why it's best to have these conversations with you in executive session because our plan, I shouldn't speak to our plan, but in executive session, that's our entire goal is to co cooperate and work with the VA to come to a number that's far lower than numbers that have been thrown out, and that process is ongoing. How does talking about that in the public and letting them know what is owed or is alleged to be owed a problem legally? Well, it seems to me that it's information that's coming from these meetings in whole or in part is being used to advance other interests um, and to uh, to support an agenda to maybe uh, shut down the flight program. And I'm not the person to say whether it should or shouldn't be shut down, but it's not. Uh, this doesn't seem to be characterized in in any way to help or or benefit the school. The statement that there's no students in Arizona, that's a great example. Today, are there no students? Yes. But do you know which students have driven and have been the vast majority of the students in this program that have created millions of dollars of revenue? Students from Arizona. So there are just a lot of things that are incomplete. And I, I know that you, sir, whom I don't know that well, have a good heart. And I know what you want to do is help the school. And I respect that. Uh, but I don't see anything in here that is, is helping. And I, I'm very selfish. I have a job to do, which is to protect you. I don't care about what's happening politically. And it, I, it's hard for me to do my job if we're going to have meetings and I have to be concerned about what folks are going to say and it's going to be turned into some, someone else's agenda. Well, I mean, you know, the, um, I think talking about policies and talking about issues in the public of a public-owned institution is in its best interest. I, I still don't know what you're tell, trying to tell us that the legal issue is. You're talking about policy issues rather than legal. I'm, I'm actually not, sir. Um, when I see information in here that says that we're in litigation, well, that's just not accurate. When I see that the attorney's fees is $575 an hour, that's just not accurate. When I see, so, let me see right, so uh, you can correct that by saying that we're not in litigation, right? Should that be said in the executive session? And what's your uh, the point is is I the hourly rate is a is a public record, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, so how is that harmful? If most people don't believe what they read in the newspaper, right? Well, if most people don't believe, then what's the reason to go to the newspapers at all with this? Then why can't we do it here? Where it, where it needs to be done. And what I'm saying, sir, is that this undercuts my ability to do my job. This tells me that I have to be careful what I say to my clients. And meetings like this, as you well know as an attorney, take place all the time. Why do we have a privilege? So that folks with their clients, being an institution, a company, or human beings, can talk and everybody can say what they need to say and not worry that it goes somewhere else, perhaps for a different reason. 
this isn't helping solve the problem with the VA. Tell me how this helps solve the problem with the VA. I, mean, I, that, I don't know what the problems with the VA are, except the ones we created the, uh, by, by billing them incorrectly. That's what I've been told. So I don't know what the problem with the VA is. I haven't been told, other than the fact that they want some money. The, uh, the rest of it, I don't see whether that's how that's confidential to anybody. It's the public's right to know what your uh, rate is and whether we owe the VA or whether they say we owe the VA or not. And I say that. It's talked in the public meeting on August the 3rd is the exact amount that we owe. Well, if it's a public record what my rate is, then why can't uh, members of the board get that correct? And the whole flow of this, I'll go on, sir, because if you wish to take this path, then we can continue the discussion. The, the theme here is that all of this money is being spent out of state with no benefit to the school. The irony is that all of the benefit, the vast majority of the benefit to this school, the money it received, and the reason that the program was profitable is because of Arizona. The program may be in Arizona, but the money flows back right here. And Mr. Dr. John's going to show you just how more profitable this program was than the nursing program and how this program helped support other programs. So when I see this, do I think that this is accurate? Do I think that this helps? No. Well, like I say, and you're not hired to decide policy, right? <clears throat> I'm not talking policy. Well, I'm, I'm going not, line by line through this letter I'm and not, telling you what's, dis I'm what's wrong. I'm policy when, we, when you would have to uh, tell me what the benefit is for this school and these taxpayers to have any presence in Arizona at all. That's, that's what we have to figure out. And again, that's easy. If the program is back on track, that's where the vast majority of the money is going to come from and the profit. So there's a benefit in your wallet, in your pocket. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's not a benefit to the people of Fort County. How isn't it a benefit to Fort County if the school gets the revenue? Well, I mean, number one, how is that your problem as an attorney to give uh, advice to this school about problems with the VA? or problems with the grand jury. We're yeah. not in executive We're, session, and I'm not giving you advice, sir. I'm answering your questions. May, We're may, getting may off I, track here. We're getting off track here. May, may I just say well, something? Please, go ahead. You know, totally get off track. You know, Terry, you're, you're an attorney. You represent clients. You understand that while we may not be in full-blown litigation, we're in a dispute with the Veterans Administration. We're in a dispute. And for a trustee to walk out and say, this is, this is the amount that's owed, on behalf of the client, the college, that's not helpful. Wait a minute. Because, because a just, just a second, if I may, lie. if I may, because we don't know what, if anything, is owed to the VA. That's part of the process. And to have the trustees who represent the college, the people think you guys speak for the college, and to have that person out or persons out saying these things, it's not helpful when we try to deal and, and try to resolve this dispute with the VA. Well, do you remember? But, excuse me. If I, just one, just one last point. Is, you know, you need to know. You, as 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 the decision makers for the college, need to know. And 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 I think, as Mr. Baskin said, it is important that the public's informed. The timing of when the public's informed can't be done at the cost of the college, and that's what's happening here. On August the 3rd at 7.30 in the morning, Dr. Nolte and Gary Harshberger both stated that we owed the, the uh, VA $33 million. That was in a public meeting. It wasn't in an executive session. So don't blame anybody here for spilling the beans. And I was not how that went I down. Was, well, I was very careful. That was not how that went down. So I, that's didn't wrong. Say, I did not say we owed it. I said we were being billed that amount. And it was, it was already discussed. It's so did you go on and just inform minute, the public that there was still discussions and we told everybody on our trip back for the meeting with the VA that there were problems with the calculations. We have no idea what the debt is. By going out and telling this was misleading and setting the stage I, incorrectly. Gary, I've got that my letter. That is a dereliction in Gary, your duty. I've got my and letter. every right. trustee in here decided at that time to take our legal counsel's advice, our legal counsel's advice, and our professional advice of how to deal with this issue. And the vote was five to two. And since you guys didn't agree with it, you take it to the public to curry favor with misinformation to try to bully the board 
and to do something different. There's no misinformation here. In the there fact. is. You're, 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 you're at a turn. I, I said, with that, the, information. I said information. the college is disputing the charges. Are we disputing the charges? Dan, are we disputing yes. the charges? Yes. Yes. That's what I said in my letter. I said we're being billed for $33 million. Is that correct? That's, no, it's not. You may, you made that statement. You made the statement that we owed the VA in a meeting no. already, in an open no. meeting. Yes, you did. No. Yes, you did. Did not state thirty-three million. Absolutely yes, you incorrect. Did. You absolutely did not. And and I said nothing in this letter that came from an executive session. All this was already public information. All of it. Back in November of two thousand seventeen, as as Terry as Malone in an ad campaign ad puts out that it's eight point five million. Now it's you say it's thirty three million. You're so talking, what is it? But you're the but one you're who talking said it. But if you only knew Didn't either. You, if you only knew what you were talking about here. I <laughs> do. Right. That's the problem. Wait a, wait a second. Stop getting You don't me. understand Stop attorney client privilege, Stop obviously, Terry. Stop interrupting people when they're talking. You asked you said something. Mr. Baskin told us that there was an eight and a half million dollar bill owed uh, in the in the grand jury. Has he added up three point uh, eight and three point seven, and then he came back the next meeting and said that was incorrect. That was with the grand jury. Hasn't got anything to do with this. We didn't know about the VA money until May. And believe it or not, you and Dr. Multi both uh, during that meeting said, yes, the VA is serious because at first we thought they weren't. They're serious, and that is what owed. Is what owed. So. Did you continue and there were on other, that there were other explanation? People, there were other people at the meeting. So what difference does it make whether or not it's a matter of... Uh, the fact is they... Really? Have, they have billed us for $33 million. They haven't. Yes, they have. They have not. And I have... Well, then why worry about it? I, 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 Mr. Baskins, I did not say that your fee was $575. I said that we are paying attorney's fees, including all your assistants, also uh, Mr. Kerb's fees. I don't know if it exactly comes to that, because I didn't get your hours that you had actually worked. But I figured it was pretty close to that. I'm not talking about your personal fee. I'm talking about all the fees we paid from, to all the attorneys, those working for you, those working for us. And, uh, and I never included any travel in that at all. There's expenses for travel. You've come up here seven times. I assume that, that you didn't take that out of your own pocket. That we paid for it. So there's that expense too. I said nothing. I said you you may interpret that I said something that was discussed in executive session. I said absolutely nothing in my letter that was from executive session. It had already been discussed in open session, including the thirty three million. And I did not say we owed it. I said we're being billed for it, and there's discussion. It's being disputed. The charges are being disputed. Is that what's really happening? We're disputing the charges. Is that an inaccurate statement that we're disputing the charges? We're disputing the charges. We are disputing, right? Not in okay, litigation. Then that's an accurate we're... statement. What part of that is inaccurate? That we're fact, being billed for it. Number one, that we're not in litigation. Um, and the context of this correspondence, I don't think, is particularly clear. And again, uh, my opinion really doesn't matter. And I, I am not going to debate the finer points of this correspondence. I will once again say in public that I'd like to be able to do my job. And I'd like to be able to do my job without worrying about having to come back here or about getting emails or about seeing things on Facebook or in the paper about this that potentially could get in the hands of the folks that we're dealing with that would not reflect well, could change opinions and positions towards us. And again, as Mr. Kerb said, the public's going to know all this information anyhow. But sometimes that has to yield to allowing us to do what we're doing, to help you. Well, we all here want to help. I think the stakeholders, the people who pay for this college, have an absolute right to know what's going on. And it, by day by day, by month by month, by year by year, what's going on. If we're, in, if we're discussing a $33 million bill and we're discussing how much of that we owe, I think the community has the right to know that. And I appreciate that as the school's attorney. If the Then how would I ever do my job? If now I have six, how many are in the community? Do I have 20,000 clients now? 
to advise or to reconcile. That's why we have you. You're here because you're speaking for your people. You're speaking for your constituents. That's the job that you're doing. Every time I see you, you're, that is the community. You are the conscience of the community. You are the community itself. And it's a privilege to be here and advise you. But there are things that should stay amongst us at, as we build towards something that's going to be publicly but disclosed. But all of this had already been in public session. Every bit of it had already been in public session except for your fee. And it's, you have a contract and it's public also. Now it's not that, it's not $575, but it's... Um, I'll make it easy for you. It's 450 and I'm yeah. not, no one on my team is billing more than, than that. So, Trustee Reichenborn, if it's already in public session and it's already been, why, why, why the letter? Because a lot of people didn't know what had gone on. Uh, most people don't come to those work sessions, as you well know. You don't even come to them. You don't even you don't come well, to them. Well, no, I don't. Come to my, them. My, my, my concern as, as the college's attorney is, just off what you just said, is that, you know, the public has a right to know, and I'm going to tell the public, how you've been involved in negotiations? You were a negotiator for the uh, uh, for the teachers at the uh, at the school district. You were, I think, probably on the boards negotiating. You don't when you're trying to work out a dispute. You don't always reveal everything that you have. It just doesn't make sense. And when it gets back to the BA, it gets back to the U.S. Attorney's Office that these statements are being made. That's harmful. There's no other way to put it, but it's harmful. Glenn, it had already been revealed in a public meeting. Then there was no need to say it again. Then you should know better. Why, why say it again? It's already been revealed, then what's the difference? Then you're if damaging it's done again. College, what good is that going to do? It's that you, the information you I put out that, was intended to be damaging to the school. No. Why do you intend it to be damaging that's to the school? True. That's not well, true. Well, that's, that's exactly what it was. No, that's, it is not damaging to the school. I think if you go out and ask the members of the public, I do, you, Dan. Do you really? Yes, they, I do. They, gee. they said, "Gee, Dan sure did a bad thing by telling us what's going on at college." That's not the response I'm getting from the public. Because you need broaden your 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 group. Here's what uh, bothers me is if we want to talk what's damaged seems to the school, we're talking about uh, continuation of a program that uh, the public doesn't like doesn't want us to have and they don't even know the half of it but we next week or at, apparently what is the uh, apparently we're voting tonight on a new lease for office space is that for Arizona so the public so where's your dad on that I talked to where's people. your facts so right. you talked to people, people that's, that's the my public. question Will so you, you made what? a comment verify it validate it the public doesn't want it doesn't approve of it right. Just okay so. They don't. Oh. The people I talk oh, really? to. Really? So okay. two people that you talk to? The right. people that you meet with every yes, Sunday please, afternening? Would you stop you decide how you're doing damage to school? Talk to you for a second. Well, is, I'm not going to let you continue making false statements. Well, just let me clarify it. Is then the new please, clarify is, it. Are you finished? Is the new lease for office space regarding Arizona? No. Okay. The strategic plan that we were supposed to approve next week is chuck full of things that we're supposed to be doing in Arizona, correct? Strategic plan is an ongoing deal and it's, no. it started a year ago and this was designed to start the discussion for this year's. Well, this strategic plan, don't you agree, continues the Arizona program. That is still a program that's in that is something that we've got to get into executive session about. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Right. Yes, this we is do. a strategic five-year plan, isn't it? <clears throat> right. So the public really needs to know what our plans are. And that's why the public needs to know how much money we're spending on a program in Arizona and why we're spending it. We there. are spending money in Arizona to stave off a debt that the VA alleges we owe. That is what we're doing. Everything we're doing right now is to fix this problem. Everything we're doing going forward is to address this issue. That is what we're doing. I don't think there's anybody in this room, at this table, that is really pro or con the flight program. 
other than let's fix the problem with the VA. Okay? This problem was brought to the college in 2008. Okay? May I interrupt a minute? Go ahead. The, the difference, Terry, that you see and I see and what we were told during various times was that there is a, a indebtedness that we're working with with the VA. And in order for us to save the taxpayers that you so readily refer to, as we have said in good faith negotiations, we are going to work, to work with you to bring this debt down. And Dr. John is doing that. He is pulling out case by case saying, your information is incorrect. Look, we can prove this. So we're working with the VA slowly to do that, to show good faith negotiations. So whatever total it is will be dropped for our college. And I feel, just like if I'm sitting by my doctor, that when I go in and visit with him, that there's a confidentiality I can believe in him. When we go into executive sessions, we talk about what is the best process to take this school through, to save the taxpayers, to keep the school going. And I question now going into an executive session with you or with Dan, because I think the confidence that we hold when we talk together, we should be able to open up and say, well, I don't know if that's going to work. Well, I don't know if that's going to work. Well, what do you think? Kathy, there was nothing in my letter that. that was not already an open session. Not one single thing. You they, took it out. Not one I, single you thing. Took, you and you're saying you can't trust me in the executive no, session I because I, I revealed something from executive session you and I did not. You finish everything. Dan, you gave the, you, here's the baby. And you threw out the bathwater and didn't explain anything about it. You didn't explain. We're going through all these steps. We're working with I everything. I think I did. You even, I mean, I you said even said the college is well, disputing the charge. It's, it's, a, it's different than that that Kathy laid led into. We laid out a strategy to sit there and try to work with the VA and fix this problem because there are indebtedness letters. To the extent we don't know because the VA itself cannot replicate the letters. They can't redo the calculations. So that's what Adam and Alan are working on is working in full faith effort with the VA and we don't want to do anything in public that would upset the VA or demonstrate the fact that we are not trying our best to exert professionality and get this thing resolved. It is no different than if you got a letter from the IRS and saying you owed $100,000. What would you do? You two want us to sit there and shut the program down, cut and run. That would shut the college down. You want to sit there and say this money that we're paying our attorney to fight for is there on two fronts. Okay? Two different fronts. To just pull them out and just let, let it be. And then who's there to fight us or represent us to the VA on these allegations, these alleged debts? You want us to shut that down. You said in your letter, let's stop paying this money. To, pr to protect and defend us, much like the, if you're defending against the IRS. Well, what and then we cut and run. What Where's the debt go? Where's the debt go? You it's still there. told me there are no alleged it's debts. It's still there. said we didn't get a bill. If we didn't get a bill from the VA, how come there's an alleged debt? Man, that is stupid. That, that is that's stupid. what I that think, That comment too. is stupid. You're, you're saying we got a bill, and then the next breath you're saying we it didn't. did not, and everybody knows that. Okay, so we're not being billed anything from the VA. So we don't know that we owe them. You're being that. childish. What does the, well, you're uh, being a bully. the answer to your question? You, by you guys going to the public and try to curry favor with the public on the decision that we made of how best to go through get through this project, you guys are trying to bully the rest of the trustees. You guys are the bullies here by trying to mislead and lie to the public about what's going on. Nobody lied to the public. Yes, you did. No. Nope. You misled them. Nobody you misled them the horribly. Public. Not one lie in here. Oh, Not really? One lie. Really? Okay. Not one. Not, not one, one student in a helicopter program. Really? Yes, there is. Are there? We have oh, you're, you're right just saying not one. No. Yes, there are none. Wow. Yes, there are. All right, just a second. What do we have? Two that are finishing up somewhere in Arizona. Your comment in says Utah. no. Capitalize. No. That Dodge City helicopter program has no students. That's what you said. False. We got two that are False. finishing up in Utah. We are sitting here shooting holes in what you put out, a pop propaganda piece. 
But you guys at this point, and I, 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 oh, yes, can, can I say something? <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Mike. You know, I mean, part of it is I, I want you guys to, to be able to trust each other. Now, obviously, 2008, we started a program. Most of us on this board, most of you on the board were not here in 2008 when the program started. If it was such a bad program, why did we start it? I don't know. I, don't you, I mean, if it was so bad. I mean, if, if the people don't like it, why did we start it? I, I, you tell me. Well, I first, of, first of all, Harold, it was in Dodge City at that time. I, it, it, and um, I think it was barely started in 2008. But... Uh, and it, it provided jobs in Dodge City. It was supposed to be in Dodge City. People from all over the country were supposed to come to Dodge City and be, be instructed. And uh, that probably sounds like a pretty good idea. I don't know what happened when it got moved in 2011. I know that the public does not like us teaching people in Arizona. They don't, they don't understand it. They, they're, they're actually outraged about it. Now, we started to talk, you know, uh, all I knew when I came back on the board was that people were wringing their hands about it. Morris Reeves would constantly say, if we still have the program. For some reason, we got uh, disapproved in Kansas by the VA to operate in Kansas. But we were allowed, some, for some reason, to operate in Arizona. Last May, then, we learned that we could be in really deep due to $33 million worth. That's when, in August, uh, when, when we, at first, the administration told us that they thought that they were badly mistaken about the $33 million, but in August, it was stated with certainty, we owe $33 million. And here's one way to get out of it, and this is what doesn't make sense to me. If we just continue the program in Arizona, somehow that will bear favor with the VA and they then somehow will get out of this mess. Uh, we got to make two decisions. One, if we owe the debt, we're going to have to pay, or whatever we do. Two, if we, we have to decide whether or not we're going to continue this program. I don't think you could find 10 people in this county that would agree with continuing this program, especially when they find out most of the problems with it. So that's, that's why I wanted to review. I started asking for a review last August. I finally got one now. And, uh, and, and Trustee Malone, I, I mean, seriously, I went out there. The program right off the bat was set up wrong. 2007, it was set up totally wrong. I mean, you had an outside provider basically running the, running the program. Now, every time I have, every, when I hire a nursing instructor, I hire a nursing instructor. Because why? Because I know they can, they, they're a nurse. You know, why do I hire a history professor? Because I know they teach history. But the problem is, is you hired someone that you might have looked at his record because it wasn't all that good. But he was running the program. And when I got out there, I, I made the comment. I said, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned. But... You know, that's 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 where I mean I was I really was and, and this is when I mm -hmm. this is when I first came on board and because usually typically in an educational institution the college runs the program well this was an outside provider running the program and that bothered me and it scared me and and he got really upset with me because and you you saw that when he came to the board meeting he was not happy with me at all because he thought I was going to take away his livelihood well my point being is if I'm running a program. I need to, we need to be the college needs to be running the program and we need to be running it the right way. So that's that's the issue and that's why everybody is now involved in this and thanks to the people around here, we're trying to get this thing we're trying to get this thing resolved. Nobody's for it or nobody's against it. We're just trying to resolve the issue. It's kinda of like buying a car. If I buy a car, I'm gonna have to pay for it. And I know I'm gonna have to pay for it. I can't leave it on the street and say, Oh, by the way, you I don't want that car anymore. Well if no one's for it or against it, why does it why is it Prominently in the strategic plan because we haven't discussed. We're trying. We're trying to develop a relationship because we have broken the relationship with the VA and we broke the SSA. We broke it. And so I, my thing is, I want to develop a relationship. You know, the same kind of thing we did with the Glendale report. Same kind of stuff. The, the, you know, those. Those are the. I'm finding these issues, and we're going to try to work these things out. Well, I agree totally that we ought to whittle down the uh, 
the uh, stated amount or at least the build amount as much as we can. Sure. I just don't think it's in the best interest of the people of Ford County or this college to continue a program that we apparently didn't know how to run from the beginning and what we are doing and it is no benefit to the people of the, this state or this county. Uh, if we're going to operate one, then we ought to move it to Dodge City. If we get this, if we're going through the bills and, and looking at them closely like we are, what difference does it make to the VA whether we continue or not? You know, if we, if the, the bill is here, it's in front of you. Either we owe it or we don't owe it. We go through it. Whether we're still running the helicopter program doesn't mean we stop going through the, what they build us. It just means we stop piling up the debt we all the debt on top of the debt. We're trying to we're trying to build a, 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 a trust with the VA. We don't have trust with them right now. They don't trust us as far as they can throw us, and they can't throw us that far. And so part of our part of the situation we've got to do is build a build a build trust. And you think we do that by smoothing them by keeping this program I, I, open? Yeah. Now smoothing? No, 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 no. Don't use that. Okay, by keeping the program open, you think the VA is going to think that we're all sweetness and light? Well, no, I think they will think that we we are developing a relationship, just like we do with our, just like what we do with our community. We're developing a relationship. I mean, when I first got here, there wasn't a really good relationship with the city, the county, the school, a lot. And so my goal is to build those relationships whether it be the VA, whether it be the county, the city, the state, or whatever. So I, I, I think it's very important for us to, our, our Chamber of Commerce even, I think it's very important for us to build those kind of relationships because you can get a lot more done in building a relationship than you can carry if, if I may, and I would defer to Mr. Kerbs, some of this is kind of getting into issues of strategy that are, I don't believe should be discussed here. Sorry. Certainly. <laughs> Sorry. That, I've thought what, that from the beginning. When Alan laid out there, everybody, that's part of the strategy that we are trying to implement to try to do it. As Harold said, is rebuild that relationship with the VA that got so critically damaged from our lack of professionalism and, and just basically oversight. And so this program, like I said, was voted in by the trustees in 2008. Terry, you were on the board at the time and voted in favor of it. And yeah. At that time, you know, there's three things that should have happened, okay? One, that individual should have been vetted, and at that time, you could have found that he had a lot of black marks on his character. Number two, the Board of Trustees did not go out and get three competitive bids like they're held to by policy. But third and most importantly, you're embarking in a, in a new program, completely different from the mission of the college. The board, any board has the, the, the responsibility to say, do we have the correct talent in our operation for proper oversight? Do we, as the board, possess the right knowledge, the right information to be able to provide proper oversight? Are we demanding upon the administration to have additional oversight measures such that the college doesn't get put to risk? And that time, none of those things were done. And so what we're doing now is trying to rebuild those things. Re and the VA has told us, when we were there, they told us for many, many years, you're not doing this right. We continue on doing it. And so our credibility is nil. Like Alan said, we are getting into the arena of strategy and how best to work with the VA. But the biggest thing is, is we cannot cut and run. We have to build that relationship back. And really then and only then will we ever know if this is a viable program or not. Because right now, I don't know, but I do know we have this issue that has been created, is building for 10 years, and has come to a head. Now, how's the best way to get through this? And to cut and run and do all those things that you guys are prescribing just isn't what the board decided to do. And to sit there and try to propagandize the people and mislead them, give them misinformation, and try to bully us to change our mind just isn't going to work. We are held, this college is held in our trust. We are the stewards of this college. We have to sit there and try to figure out how the best way to get through this. And it's not by burning bridges. It's not by sticking our thumb in a, in a, in a federal entity's eye. It's about saying, yes, we might have made some mistakes. We are going to bend over backwards to work with you to get this result. And that's what we're trying to do. Because any other thing would be potentially too damaging for the school. 
Gary, I agree with you that uh, all you said about uh, what the board should be doing regarding programs. Uh, uh, we don't, we haven't, and according to this strategic plan, we don't plan to in the future either. The, uh, I think that is a failing of the board, is that we're not involved enough in making decisions and have, holding people accountable, so I agree with you 100%. I think that this particular um, program has run its course. It's in a state that has nothing to do with Kansas. In my opinion, we get no benefit from it. In fact, it has hurt us, damaged us, and may jeopardize the college's mission and the future. I think we, sh if we could, we if we could do one in in Kansas, but we can't because we apparently haven't got a good enough relationship with VA for them to even allow us to send a instruct anybody in this state to uh, how to fly a helicopter, and I don't understand that. So our, we must have burned a lot of bridges with the VA in Kansas. But, but we can't do it there, and we shouldn't be doing it. That's my position. We shouldn't be doing it in Arizona. We shouldn't be throwing good money after bad. Okay. So to your point, I'm going to bring it, bring up some facts here, Terry. Okay. Because of all the technical programs that this college puts forth, mm -hmm. so I think Adam's going to present you with some information. Excuse, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. I said Adam's going to present you with some information. I think it, even with all the issues that it has, and, and basically the risk that it brought to the school. I think we are, I think it's brought over $5 million net income to the school, Three which is that our attorney, Alan Baskin, has brought up, has been given us the ability to pay for operations of the school. So it has brought that benefit of $5 million. Three, now, 3, 3, excuse me, 3.5. And he's going to do some comparisons with some other technical programs here that actually lose money. So it is a net generator, but it we're, we have a problem because of the overhead risk here. So it comes down to students. So in spring of 2014, there was nine in Dodge City out of 132 total. Nine what? Nine students, Ford County students, out of 132 total students. In what? Prescott, Scottsdale, and Provo. Okay. okay. Six students in the summer of 14 out of 105. Fall of 14, eight students in Ford County out of 139. Spring of 15, nine students out of 161. Summer of 15, 10 students in Ford County versus 153. Fall of 2015, 14 out of 186. Spring of 16, 11 out of 170. Summer of 16, 12 out of 136. So I had the question myself, why did we go to Arizona? because at that time, our provider, UHI, that's where he was located, he brought the college there. But as you can see, the reason, one of the reasons why we went there, because that's where all the students are, which generated all the revenue, because that's where the students are. You're dealing with the sixth largest city. I had the same question, why are we operating there? But you cannot have a program where you have nine students, eight students, 10 students here, it doesn't pay the overhead. We had four people at the college working to provide oversight at the college. When you're dealing with a federal program, a federal... Okay, yeah, you've got that, Adam. Thank you. This is all stuff that's going to get presented in. So I jumped ahead, but the dialogue went there. So my apologies to Adam for kind of one-upping. So I had the same question you had. Why are we there? When you look at the number of students, you see why we were there. We got brought there because... Gordon Drew, UHI, that's where his programs were, so we moved out there. But you, then you can see, okay, now I can see, because of all the students, they were all out there. And so when you're building a program, it doesn't hurt to go to where students are. Uh, but nonetheless. So I would suggest we get on with that part of the agenda then. Okay. I have a question, Gary. That that I was providing misinformation to the public, and I'd like to know what misinformation I provided. I'm not going to reply to Terry for Dan. We're going to move on. Well, I, I, I think it's disparaging of you to say that it's against the rules of our uh, ethics, and yes, you're, right. not and you, you're, you're not following. You're not following those. To re -read those rules. I stated I stated that we had no students in Arizona, and we don't. 
We don't have even two finishing up. We have in some in Provo. Dodd City Community we have College some in Helicopter Program has no students. In Arizona. Doesn't that say that. Doesn't, doesn't say that. Wait a minute. Right now, you have, got the, you have got the wrong thing here. Uh, we move on. I'll read it to you. It has no students in Arizona. You can't see how your comments are misleading. It's a lost cause. All right, Mr. Curves, would you please take us into executive session? Okay. I recommend the board recess into executive session to discuss the college college's flight program as it relates to a grand jury subpoena and related matters involving the Department of Veterans Affairs. Pursuant to the attorney client privilege exception KSA 754319 B2. The open meeting to resume in this location at 7.15 p.m. In addition to the trustees, the president, the college attorney, Provost John, and attorney Alan Baskin should be included in the executive session. Do I have a motion? So I have a question. Oh, go ahead. I have a motion. Okay. I have a question from the land. Yes. Do you have concern with having Dan or Terry in our executive sessions with the conversation with well, the concerns I have are for any trustee, if we're going to have an executive session, that they will be faithful to what the purpose of that executive session is, and that is to provide information to the trustees, information that otherwise would not be provided to the public. And if we can't do that, then our executive session is defeated. If some of you can't do that, the best thing for you to do would be to not be a part of it so you're not challenged by it. The board does not, in my opinion, have the ability to say you or you can't be in executive session. That's a decision that the trustee makes. But obviously, uh, you know, it, 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 it creates a dilemma. I wrote, I wrote a letter that I shared with all of you. It creates a dilemma of what we can and cannot tell the board. Because our concern is the college. Can, can we include Dr. Forby also in the, in the term? There has been a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We are going to be in executive session for 30 minutes, so we'll regain session in uh, 8.50. We are now, now back in session, and but we will need to go back into it, another executive session, so I'll turn it over to Kirk. Mr. Chairman, I recommend the board recess into executive session to discuss the college's flight program as it relates to a grand jury subpoena and related matters involving the Department of Veterans Affairs. Pursuant to the attorney-client privilege exception KSA 75-4319-2, the open meeting to resume in this location at 7.45 p.m. In addition to the trustees, the president, the college attorney, Provost John, attorney Alan Baskin, and Vice President Forgey should be included in the executive session. Okay. Is there a motion? Second. 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 Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We are now in executive session. Okay, we are now back in general session and no action was taken. So we'll move on to item three on our agenda. This is the overview of the flight program. So, Adam, I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to, to briefly go through a few things. I know that there's been um, questions as far as the, the status of the, the flight program, what's going on with it. And, um, and trustees, I know you already have this information, so I'll, I'll go through it briefly. But again, if you guys have questions, please, please let me know. Um, each of you have been provided with an enrollment history back to spring of, of 2014, broken down by location. Um, you can see that in the, in the spring of 2017, um, enrollment stopped in Dodge City. That was a result of, um, of the, the state approving agency removing the, the veterans approval there. Um, you can see the, the same type of changes in Provo, Prescott, and Scottsdale, and they, they're all for those, those same reasons. Um, but this, again, kind of gives you a, an enrollment history of what, 
what was going on with that that program. Um, as of right now, um, we are um, very very close to regain our approvals in Arizona, and so hopefully we'll be um, up and operating relatively soon. Um, and again, I will keep you posted as we've got that. The the other things that I, I wanted to to cover, each of you have a um, a seven year financial history of the of the program. Um, this was the same document that you were given in July of this past year um, by Sandy Moore, and then I have updated the the most current year. Um, you you can see that. For this current year, um, year to date, we've lost a little over $140,000 or 140000 in the negative in, for that program. Um, however, if you look at it over the seven year period, um, it has brought in a net income of um, a little over $3.5 million to Dodge City. Um, that even includes the, the current losses for this year. Um, that $3.5 million, um, as I stated, has not been reinvested in, in Phoenix or in Arizona. Um, that 3.5 has been used here in, in Dodge City to help pay some of the expenses of some of our technical programs. It's been used for raises for faculty and staff. Um, it's been used to pay for some of the facilities, including the Student Activity Center, which we know has been used as a FEMA shelter and some of those types of things. So uh, again, there, there has been a, a significant um, benefit to the to the four county taxpayer and to the to the students and the employees of Dodge City Community College. Um, the last thing that I, I just wanted to to talk about briefly was um, that there's been a a few questions as far as um, a, a attorneys fees and different things that have been been put out there. And each of you have have received a packet um, that, that answers those those specific questions as far as what some of the expenses have been and, and those types of things. So um, I, again, it's not my in, my intention to to spend a lot of time on this because you guys have the the numbers in front of you. Um, I, I, I want to say one last thing before I before I take any questions, um, and and, it, and it's twofold. What I, I mentioned a little bit earlier that sometimes the administration, an administrator is like the, the GPS of the college, right? It's our job to see the big picture and make sure we're, we're going down the right path. And, and this is an opportunity, um, if done correctly, and if we, we take the time to do it right, where, like I said, there, there, are, there is potential to bring in revenues that help the college and help our taxpayers. Um, but the other thing I, I, I wanna say and this is just a, an observation I've made, and, um, and, I, and I hope you guys take this in the spirit that I mean it, because I mean it with love. <laughs> so one of the things that I've seen over the years is that whenever there's conflict, whenever there's problems, whenever there's challenges, one of the best things that you can do is focus on the student. And we need to ask ourselves, when I'm taking this activity, whether it be um, writing a letter to the editor, whether it be making a policy, whether it be whatever that action may be, if we ask ourselves, how does this impact the student? And not just our current students, but our former students that rely on the reputation of the college to, to help them get jobs. Um, our, our current students that are working hard to, to graduate our future students that, that aren't here yet. If every decision we make, if every thing we do, we have that in the back of our mind, how does this impact the student? One of the things I've found is we all love the students. We're all here for the students. None of us went into education to, to get rich, right? None of us came to education for, for the, the thrill of it. We all came here because we love the kids and we want to help the kids. Um, and so for me, if we can focus on that first and foremost, if we can set aside, we're all gonna disagree. That's normal, that's fine. But if we can set aside those differences and put the student first, we'll all come together a lot more and we'll make a lot better decisions. 
I, I think about, and I've shared this, um, this story with a lot of different students. I, as many of you know, I'm the first college graduate in my family. And I was one of those kids that when I went back to school, I thought I was too stupid to be a college graduate. I really did believe that. And most of our students feel that same way. They don't know that they can be successful. And, and for me, I got through by having a lot of people help me and encourage me and believe in me. And because I did it, all of a sudden my mom went back to school and, and she got a degree. My brother went back to school, he got a degree. My wife went back to school. My, my daughter just graduated from here last year and she's in her, just finishing up her junior year at Fort Hayes right now. And, but what would have happened if the school I was at had a bunch of turmoil and chaos and I had a bad experience I ended up dropping out, already believing that I was too stupid to do it. Not only would that have had a negative impact on me, but it would have had a negative impact on my entire family for generations to come. So I, I, I know that all of us care. I know that we're all doing what we believe is best. But I just, again, is that GPS <laughs> saying make a U-turn now? I, I, I would just make that recommendation to, to put this, think about how are my actions impacting the student. And I, I guarantee it's gonna have a, a huge positive impact on, on not only all of us, but on, on our community as well. So with that said, thank you guys, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. I was looking at this sheet, the uh, enrollment sheet. And uh, presently, is Provo the only place we can operate? Um, right now, Provo is the only place that has a student. We can operate in, in Arizona. Well, let me, let me back up. We can technically operate in any of our locations because there's a difference between the approvals from the states and the approvals from HLC and the approval of the Veterans Administration. So right now, we can technically operate anywhere. Um, it's a matter of whether or not the veterans can, can use their benefits at those locations. So that, that's what, when you hear us talk about approvals and different things, that's what we're talking about, not approval to operate. Um, the only place that we're currently um, marketing and, and, and trying to recruit students is in the Phoenix market currently. And we're, the VA is okay with us? Um, the, the VA will be okay with us there soon. I believe so. <laughs> so, Adam, you said HLC. Did you mean to say HLC? Approval well, HLC? I, I mean that HLC does not accredit individual programs, they accredit an institution. Right. And so, because we are fully accredited from um, and including the, the Arizona and Utah and, and California markets, quite honestly, HLC is okay with us operating this program in any of those markets. So, so that's all I was trying to say. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that clarification. Yep. And then, Dr. John, uh, on the uh, $3.5 million net over the last 10 years, mm -hmm. right, that does not take into account perhaps the $30 million debt. But... You're, you're right. That, like I said, that, that's just from an operational perspective. <coughs> Any other questions or or comments? Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on. We have uh, one action item to take. So do we have a. I guess I'll turn this over to Glenn. Okay. Uh, we have been in the process for the last several months of uh, negotiating with UHI to terminate the two agreements that we currently have in place with UHI. Uh, one is the uh, cooperative agreement that was entered in 2016 uh, for the flight and ground training students of the college. And we also uh, had the private pilot certificate that uh, uh, we entered into an agreement with them in February of 2017. And uh, I think everyone has um, had concerns about the relationship with UHI. I believe it's been the consensus of the board that as far as the flight program goes, it would be better to have another provider. And so those agreements extend out into the 20s, uh, I think uh, 2021 and 2022. And so through those negotiations, we've reached an agreement to terminate those contracts. So what's before you tonight is the agreement to terminate the contracts. And uh, uh, it has been approved by uh, Mr. Giroux and uh, UHI. 
all it needs is the approval of this board to uh, end those contracts and, and sever that ongoing relationship with UHI. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved. Floor steam, is oh, that a second? second? Okay. But I wanted to ask you a question. Are we, is it ironclad that we won't come back on? No, in fact, uh, the, no, no, it's not. <laughs> what it does is it stops the contracts that are currently in place. It ends those contracts. And uh, as Mr. Baskin said earlier, there's there's the possibility of indemnification that we have against him. He also has a right of indemnification against us. Of course, you would have to be in a legal, a good legal position to get indemnification, whether it be us or him. And we feel pretty confident that we would be in a good place if that were to arise. Further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, that completes our agenda, so thank you all very much and safe travels home.